What if your diet is secretly destroying your teeth? Carnivore and vegan diets are probably two of the most extremely different diets that I can think of. But both of them can have surprisingly different effects to your dental health. So which one is better? Well, stay tuned and find out. So how does your diet affect your mouth? Well, your mouth is the first line of digestion in your body. And you have bacteria that live in your mouth. Some of these bacteria are good, some of these bacteria are bad. And your diet can influence these bacteria in different ways. Now, quick disclaimer. This video isn't about bashing different diets or supporting one diet over another. It's merely just looking at the facts of what certain things in one diet can do to your teeth and how you can actually improve it. So I wrote down some of the most essential minerals for our teeth and our gums. These are calcium, phosphorus, magnesium, vitamin D, vitamin K2, and then fluoride or hydroxyapatite. Now, we're going to get into that a bit. There's a bit of a controversy there. Not going to focus on that too much in this video though. So calcium is basically the main building block of our enamel and our dent. This is going to be found in things like dairy and bones, like bone broth, and in different leafy greens. Now, phosphorus is important because it actually works together with calcium to strengthen our teeth. This is going to be found in things like meats, fish, nuts, and different seeds. Magnesium is something that again helps support the calcium, and this also helps keep our enamel strong and hard. And this is gonna be found in things like dark leafy greens, different nuts, seeds, and legumes. Now vitamin D is important because it helps absorb calcium. We always hear it's found in sunlight, but it's also found in things like fatty fish and egg yolks. Now vitamin K2 is important because it helps direct the calcium to the right places, like things like our teeth, and our bones and away from our soft tissues. This is found in things like animal products like butter and liver, but also things like sauerkraut and fermented soybeans. You'll notice that a lot of these minerals revolve around calcium, either getting to the right place or getting absorbed, and calcium itself. Now the last mineral that's important is either using fluoride or hydroxyapatite. Now these are basically things that remineralize or strengthen our teeth because our teeth are constantly losing minerals and adding new minerals. Now the building blocks of our teeth are hydroxyapatite crystals. So our enamel is made up of these hydroxyapatite crystals. Fluoride is essentially going to do the same thing as hydroxyapatite, but it's going to be a little bit stronger. So when we swap out these hydroxyapatite crystals with the fluoride ion, we basically turn this hydroxyapatite into something called fluorapatite. And these crystals are a little bit more compact, they're a lot tighter together, and they're harder to break down. So that's why the fluoride is recommended. Now, whether you're pro or against fluoride, there's a lot of different controversy out there. There's also hydroxyapatite products out there that will also be remineralizing your teeth. Now, another key component that is important for our teeth that can also be swayed by our diet is our saliva. So our saliva is like a natural bodyguard for our teeth and our gums, and it also helps remineralize our teeth. So it can buffer out a lot of the acids in our mouth, it can mineralize our teeth, it carries a lot of important nutrients in it, and it can clean our teeth and our gums. So for example, a diet that's really high in sugar and fermentable carbs can make our saliva a lot more acidic. And this can lead to damage to our teeth over time because our enamel does not like acid. Our enamel is really strong, but over time as it's exposed to more acids, this can cause more demineralization or basically weakening of our enamel. And this eventually can also cause cavities. So let's talk about the carnivore diet first. Now there's a bunch of different versions of the carnivore diet that I've seen online, but essentially it's just eating meat and not eating any carbohydrates. Now let's start with the pros when it comes to your dental health. So one pro is you're not eating any carbohydrates. So if you have no carbohydrates, you're not going to get any cavities because the bacteria in your mouth can only cause cavities if they're exposed to carbohydrates. Once these bacteria in your mouth eat carbs, then they can release acids that cause holes to form. If there's no carbs, then you're not going to really give them any food to eat. You're also going to get a lot of these fat soluble vitamins like vitamin A, vitamin D, and vitamin K2. This is going to help your enamel get remineralized and help your gums stay healthy. And you're also not going to have much plaque because again, you're not going to be feeding these bacteria in your mouth any carbohydrates or anything to eat on. When these bacteria don't have any food, they're eventually going to die. So you're not going to get much plaque buildup. Now what are the potential downsides of a carnivore diet? One thing you might get is erosion. Now meat itself doesn't directly cause erosion to your teeth. It technically is a little acidic, but it's usually not acidic enough to basically erode or dissolve your teeth. But if you frequently consume acidic foods like vinegar-based sauces or different processed meats, then over time it can contribute to some of this erosion on your teeth. And what you also might notice is high protein diets can lead to more uric acid production. And this again can lead to a more acidic environment in your mouth. And the third way your mouth might get more acidic is when you have less carbs, you tend to produce less saliva. And this can make it harder to neutralize any acids that are there in the first place and make it harder to remineralize your teeth. But again, at least you don't have carbohydrates that are feeding those bacteria in the first place. Now something else you might notice is your breath might start to smell. This is something called keto breath. When you have a carnivore diet, your body will start resorting to 
burning fat for its fuel. This will in turn produce ketones like acetone. Acetone can be released through the breath and it can smell terrible. It can have a really fruity or metallic odor specifically. And when you're in ketosis, your saliva production also gets lowered. So this can lead to a drier mouth and dry mouths are really associated with having bad breath. You probably wake up with morning breath when you have a dry mouth and that's because your mouth doesn't have much saliva. And having a dry mouth will also increase the risk of getting gum disease. Now we talked about how cavities aren't really a risk with the carnivore diet, but gum disease still is. So how can you fix this if you are on a carnivore diet? Well, it's gonna be really helpful to stay hydrated, chew sugar-free gum, something preferably that has xylitol in it. Xylitol is really cool because it's antibacterial, so it can fight off any bacteria in your mouth. And also making sure you're getting as many mineral-rich foods as you can, even though your diet's pretty limited. Now let's go on to the vegan diet, the other end of the spectrum. The benefits here for your teeth are it's gonna be higher in fiber. So a lot of these diets can naturally cleanse your teeth because of the fiber that's in the foods. And these are things found in different fruits and vegetables, and these can be really anti-inflammatory. This can really help fight gum inflammation, so bacteria that enter the gums, they tend to cause a lot of inflammation, so this can help a lot with that. And these diets are a lot lower in saturated fats, especially when you compare it to a carnivore diet. And some studies do suggest that this could improve gum health by, again, reducing systemic inflammation. Now, what are the downsides here? Now, this really depends on how your diet looks as a vegan, because for a carnivore, your diet is pretty much straightforward. You're just gonna be eating meat and butter and whatever else you're gonna be eating. Now, let's go over the potential risks with the vegan diet when it comes to your teeth. Now, this really depends on what exactly you're eating as a vegan because there's a bunch of different foods you can eat as a vegan. Now when you compare this to a carnivore, there's really limited options. And I know there's different definitions of carnivores out there, but when you're talking about just purely eating meat, there's not much variety out there. So one potential risk is you might have more fermentable carbs. These are things like grains and different starchy foods. These can provide a field day for the cavity causing bacteria in your mouth because they love eating these kinds of foods. And in turn, they can release acids that damage your teeth. Now that being said, a lot of unhealthy things could still be considered vegan. Things like potato chips and crackers, just because is vegan doesn't mean it's healthy. Now, same thing with this diet, you might have more acidic foods, depending on if you're eating a lot of citrus, if you're drinking a lot of kombucha, if you're having vinegar-based dressings, for example. All these things can lower the pH of your saliva. And not only does this soften your enamel, but a lot of these different dressings out there have a lot of sugar in them. So just be careful whenever you're adding some of these to your diet. Now, another potential downfall that could apply to really either diet, but applies a little bit more to the vegan diet is if you ever do frequent snacking. So if you're snacking throughout the day instead of just eating one meal at a time, especially on carbohydrate heavy things, could be destroying your teeth. Because when you constantly introduce foods into your mouth that feed these bacteria, then these bacteria constantly have a food supply. That means they're constantly gonna be pooping out acids and constantly demineralizing and weakening our teeth. Now there is also a risk of nutrient deficiencies depending on what you're eating as a vegan. So for example, calcium is really found in dairy and if you can't eat dairy, you might wanna look for things like plant-based milks that are fortified, things like almonds and leafy greens because all of these can help you get your calcium. Same thing with phosphorus, you wanna look for things like nuts or lentils or whole grains and soy products. Magnesium, these are gonna be found in things like spinach, black beans, pumpkin seeds, and dark chocolate. Now vitamin D is gonna be hard to get from your food alone. So you might wanna look for fortified plant milks or different supplements. There's a lot of different vitamin D supplements out there. Another one that's lacking in a lot of vegan diets is vitamin K2. Like you might be able to get it from fermented soybeans, but again, you might need a supplement. Now a lot of different supplements like vitamin D, for example, is combined with vitamin K2, which I think, if you're gonna look for a supplement like that, you wanna look for one that you get both of those. Another nutrient that's not listed here that you might also wanna look into is omega-3s. Omega-3s are also really good for your gum health specifically. Now these are gonna be found in foods like flax seeds, chia seeds, walnuts, or even like algae-based supplements. Now after hearing a little bit about both diets, when it comes to your teeth, which diet is worse? The answer is both diets have their own risks. Just like any diet, it really depends exactly what you're eating to know which one is gonna be worse for your mouth. I think either way, you're not gonna change your diet after watching this video. But what I want you to focus on is looking at nutrient deficiencies and looking at the pH balance in your mouth. You wanna make sure you're not getting something too acidic in your mouth, and you're gonna wanna make sure you're getting enough nutrients to support your teeth. For the carnivores, they have very low cavity risk, but they might have ketosis-related problems, and they might have lower saliva, which could lead to problems with their gums down the road. 
load. And for vegans, depending on what they're eating, they might have a higher risk for cavities depending on what carbohydrates they're eating. But generally, they have a better saliva situation. In my opinion, I think it's best to have a balanced approach. Now, I'm specifically talking about the health of your mouth because my goal is to make sure you get enough minerals, making sure you do not have a very acidic mouth. Now, when it comes to your overall health, I'm not here to make that decision because I think there's enough people on the internet already debating this about which diet is best for your overall health. But what I've noticed is no one really talks about the health of your mouth and what these different diets will contribute to. So that was the point of this video. Now, before I go, I want you to tell me in the comment section below, if you tried one of these diets below, what have you noticed with your oral health? Have you noticed certain changes with your teeth and your gums? Please let me know. And as always, thank you guys for watching. I hope you liked that video. If you haven't already, hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel below, and I will see you in the next video. You brush, you floss, you might even use mouthwash, but your breath still stinks. <sighs> oh! The truth is, when it comes to bad breath, most people are treating the wrong problem. If your breath stinks no matter what, there could be a hidden problem. But in this video, I want to help you find that hidden reason and then help you fix it for good. If you've ever felt self-conscious,